Hello everyone, welcome to another video. In today's video, we'll be talking about these two gimbals, the GM Weibo 3 and the Weibo 2, and compare them side by side so that you can find out which one you should get. Stay tuned to the end of the video to find out which one of the two will be worth it for you. So it's great to see you on the channel. If you're new, make sure you hit the subscribe button for similar videos to this video. And if you're already subscribed, thank you again so much for coming back. The Weibo 3 just came out about a few weeks ago. The Weibo 2 came out last year in 2021. So overall, the Weibo 2, it's a little bit taller just by a tiny bit than the Weibo 3. The Weibo 3 is also lighter than the Weibo 2. The Weibo 2 is about 1.5 kilograms in weight, whereas the Weibo 3 is about 1.24 kilograms in weight. So when picking something for a long run and gun shooting type of day, the Weibo 3 is going to be your best friend. Jiyun does claim that the Weibo 2 has a slightly stronger motor, but for my purposes and the setups that I've used, I found that both perform pretty much the same. As you can see, the motor on the Weibo 2 right here is a little bit bigger than the one on the Weibo 3. And that's what gives the Weibo 2 an edge over the Weibo 3 in terms of motor power. One feature that the Weibo 3 pretty much destroy not only the Weibo 2, but also every other gimbal on the market right now is that it has a battery runtime of 21 hours which is insane. You could pretty much take it on a short trip and if you were not using it the entire time, you would turn it on and off. It could probably last you like a three or four day trip. This one has a battery life of nine hours, which is still quite impressive, but the drawback is that since it has one of these, the flip out screen, this is going to significantly reduce that battery life. That being said though, they both support PD, USB, fast charge, and it can be charged in about two hours or slightly less. There's one cool thing about this gimbal, the Weibo 3, is that we can get technically get rid of the tripod and you can just lay it on the table and it's pretty steady. So if you wanted to go even more compact with this, you could just use that. As long as you have the new sling and the new wrist rest, attached then you should be good to go whereas on the Weibo 2 this is not going to stand by itself because it's only this tiny base so it's not going to be safe for you to do that so you have to use the tripod so we're going to work our way from down to up of both gimbals to check out the differences and similarities you can tell over here that the Weibo 3 has this L-like structure body shape at the bottom and this is where the battery is. As you can see, it's a much larger battery compared to the one on the Weibo 2. The handle though, is a little bit smaller and not as thick as the one on the Weibo 2. But I really like this because it has a wrist rest. So let me talk about that wrist rest. So this wrist rest, you attach to the bottom of the gimbal like so, and it actually acts as a very good extra support. This extra point of contact with your wrist, it makes it a lot more comfortable to hold this gimbal. The other difference that you'll see right away is that the under slung mode is different on both gimbals. On this one, you get, sorry for the noise, on the Weibo 3, you get this one that you can extend like so. And honestly, for myself, I have a love and hate relationship with this. I like it because I'm able to just keep it here and it's not right here at the top compared to the Weibo 2. But on the other hand, it's not as sturdy as one of these things because it's not a stick and not as sturdy and it's slightly off the center. So the center of gravity sometimes can affect the performance of the gimbal depending on how heavy your setup is. But otherwise, I really like it. Now, when we go on the Weevil 2, you have to get an extra tripod leg or one of the handles that are sold separately, I believe. And once you have them here, like so, let's say you're handling your gimbal, you go under slug mode this way, but this is still right in front of you. Whereas on the Weibo 3, it's on the side. So it's like a slightly different experience when you're shooting in underslung mode or undersling. Is it undersling or underslung? Let me know in the comments below whether you think it's undersling or underslung. Let's continue moving up on both gimbals. So both have a joystick. The record button stays right here. 
whereas the one here on the Weeble 2 is here too. On the Weeble 2, you get a switch to quickly go from pan follow, lock, and follow. Whereas on the newer Weeble 3, you get a mode button to toggle between all of the different modes. If you wanted to access the other modes on the Weeble 2, you would have to go and open the flip out screen and select the modes there. As we move to the front here, we have the trigger button that you can map to a special function. But on the Weeble 3, you get a scroll wheel that by default, it's set to the roll on the gimbal, which is quite handy, but the Weeble 2 does not have this. This scroll wheel was introduced with the M3, so they kept that. Talking about the M3, the Weeble 3 also introduced the same light that the M3 has. This one right here, this LED light, fill light, that it's not bad and in a pinch it can come in very handy and it has magnetic filters that can change the color temperature of your light. On the other side of the gimbal, there's nothing on the Weeble 2, but on the Weeble 3, you get the menu button and you get the control to turn on that LED light and to adjust that color temperature of that light. I forgot to mention that over here, we get like a little scroll wheel that you can use to map either follow focus or zoom or any other control that you would like. The Weeble 3 does not have such thing. It's a little bit more compact this way. You can see that it's just one straight handle, whereas the Weeble 2 is you get the handle and then it sticks out this way. And this is for it to be able to fit the LCD screen, the OLED screen, this way they can flip out and that you can hide as well. The locking mechanisms for the axes are a little bit different. On the Weeble 2, you get this one, this triangular button kind of thing. And on the Weeble 3, it's more like a little latch which I like a lot more. Moving on, another new thing on the Weibo 3 is that now you have a built-in microphone. If you can see it right here. This Weibo 3 also has this, which is really handy. This little magnetic screwdriver that it can attach here. And it comes in really, really handy. I'm not sure about you, but I find most of the time carrying a coin just to use to lock my cameras to the plates and everything like that. But with this, I don't have to worry about that anymore. I can just leave it here. The Weeble 2 doesn't have that, unfortunately. Another cool thing about this is that the quick release system plate is now dual. So what I mean by that is that you can detach this quick release plate, attach this to your camera and bring it back here so you can balance your camera on the gimbal. And once you're ready to go, or maybe you need to detach it from the gimbal to get maybe a photo, or you want it to go handheld for a couple of shots, all you need to do is just get this plate out with the camera on it. And once you're done, you just bring it back to the gimbal and you don't have to worry about rebalancing. Whereas on the Weibo 3, then you sort of have to slide the entire gimbal unless you built out your own plate release system. The Weibo 3 right here has a tiny OLED screen where you can go and adjust the different parameters of your gimbal. Whereas the Weibo 2 had at that time when it came out a very new and fancy LCD screen, which I found after using this gimbal for a period of time that it was not my favorite. I would just go and turn it off or tuck it back in because it would really use a lot of battery power. So I like the monitor a lot more on the Weeble 3. I just like how much more compact it is compared to the Weeble 2. You're able to attach a bunch of external accessories to both of these gimbals, like the image transmission systems and the follow focus and other accessories that are available to you from June. So going back to the motor on these two gimbals, the payload for the Weeble 2 is 7.3 pounds and there is isn't information about the exact payload on the Weibo 3. They don't really mention it, but while using both gimbals, I found that both did a really good job at handling a full frame camera with a zoom lens. June does say that the motor here on the Weibo 2 is a little bit stronger, so it could probably handle a bigger, slightly bigger setup. That being said though, James Matthews put a Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 6 on this Weibo 3. And although I felt like the gimbal was struggling to keep that steady. The footage that he got was actually pretty good, but that would probably be the extent of weight that you would want to put on the Weibo 3. So which gimbal should you get? So if you already have the Weibo 2 and you're pretty comfortable with it, pretty happy with it, then I will continue to stick with the Weibo 2 and perhaps 
upgrade to another gimbal maybe next year. If you are in the market for a gimbal and you're not sure which Yoon gimbal you should be getting and you want something that can handle a full frame camera pretty comfortably, then I would definitely go for the Weeble 3 and skip the Weeble 2. So the Weeble 2, I had to check the price, comes with a standard and a standard package, a combo package, and a pro package. I'll leave links in the description below so that you can check out exactly what each of those packages include. The Weeble 3 has a standard as well as a combo package. The Weeble 2 on in a standard package is going to be cheaper than the Weeble 3 and you may even be able to find a sale on it. So you could probably get it for about $380 or $400. Whereas if we will three for the standard entry level package, you're looking at about $529. I'll be leaving links in the description below for all the different packages that you can find for both of these gimbals. And I'll leave you as well a 5% coupon code if you wanted to purchase any product from June directly from their store. Links in the description as well. So that's it for today's video. I hope that this video helped you out in getting more information to make an informed decision on which gimbal you should be getting. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Your support will be greatly appreciated. And I guess I'll see you in the next video.